Kia ora, I'm Nicky Wikoda, and this is episode 11 of AI. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to build a behavior tree and a custom editor window. You can see here the inspector panel on the left and the uh, basically the main graph view in the center, and also this uh, toolbar at the top which doesn't do anything. Um, and there are three different types of nodes, or four including the root node for the behavior tree. There is the action node, the composite node, and the decorator node. So I can create new node types on here and drag them around and link them together. Uh, so I can link a repeat node to a sequencer node and then have the sequencer node execute a debug log after a wait. And when I select a node, I get a uh, the list of public properties um, available in the inspector here. And I can type in a message to print like, hello friends, spelt totally wrong. And the wait node, um, you can set like a duration on. So this entire tree is actually saved out into a scriptable object asset here. And this asset can then be assigned to a game object. And you can have multiple game objects all referencing the same asset and they'll be instanced at runtime. So if I hit play just to kind of prove it works, you can see, hello friends, like spelled totally wrong. Awesome. So this entire editor window is actually built using UI Builder, which is an amazing tool. Uh, UI Builder basically lets you preview your editor window directly within UI Builder itself. I can drag this uh, this split view thing around, uh, press my menu button, that doesn't do anything, which is, yeah, it's, it's totally cool. You can change all the colors, all the fonts and stuff directly in this as well. The hierarchy for the entire view is actually uh, viewable as like a tree view in this uh, hierarchy panel here. And you also have a library of a bunch of different controls here, which you can then drag and drop like directly onto, onto your editor, which just makes it so quick to build uh, editor windows. So this video is really long and I've chosen to split it into three parts instead of three separate videos. So I hope this helps you to navigate the video and kind of reference the parts that you need. Uh, but yeah, I'm tried to keep everything uh, self-contained within this one video. And even though it is part of the AI series, it is pretty self-contained. So you can, you can follow this one from scratch. Cool. And with that, let's get into it. Thank you to all the Patreon supporters this month. If you are interested in supporting this channel or the project files associated with these videos, then please head over to Patreon and check it out. Cheers. Okay, so I just want to outline the core concepts in a behavior tree. So behavior tree is basically an execution tree and it always starts from a root node. So the root node always has exactly one child and there's three different types of nodes, uh, main types of nodes in a behavior tree. The first type is a decorator node and the decorator node has also got exactly one child and it's basically capable of uh, augmenting the return state of, of its children. The second type of node is called a composite node and these basically represent the control flow in your tree like uh, switch statements and for loops. There's two main types of composite nodes, the selector and the sequence node. The third type of node is an action node and these are always at the leaf of the tree. They have no children and this is where you implement all of your logic basically. Um, so each of these nodes can actually return uh, one of three states, either running, success or failure. Running just means uh, execute me again on the next frame. Success means I'm done, uh, do something else. <laughs> and failure means, uh, yeah, I'm also done, but something went wrong. So the decorator node and the composite node uh, primarily use these states to decide what to do next in the tree. So with that, I think we're ready to start implementing. Okay, so the first thing to do is just close out the scene view because yeah, I won't be needing that for a while. Um, the next thing is just create the base type for all of the behavior tree nodes and I'm gonna call this node. And this is going to be an abstract class. So we'll need to create um, subtypes for this. We can't create it directly. Um, so it'll be abstract and it will also be a scriptable object so we can uh, see it in the inspector. The first thing that we need to create is the state for the node. So every node can be in one of three states, either running, failure, or success. And we store the state um, of the node on, on the node itself. <clears throat> and I'll just make that public as well and initialize it to running. And there's kind of like a fourth state, um, which basically uh, just like signifies if the node has ever executed at all. Um, so I'm just going to call that started. And finally, um, 
we can create like our, our first function. So the first function to create uh, is just called update and it just returns the node state. But before we can implement this, um, I'm gonna create a few uh, protected abstract methods. Uh, the first one called on start, the next one called on stop, and the final one is just gonna be pretty much a mirror of the update function called on update. And basically all of these subtypes of node will implement these three functions. So the first thing to do inside the update function is just check if the node is started and if it is not then call on start and then just set started equals to true. The next step is just uh, calling the update function and storing, uh, sorry what is it, on update and storing the node state on, on the node itself. The final thing to do is basically just check if the um, if the node finished. So. If, the, if it finished, the state returned will either be failure or uh, success. And yeah, so basically if it finished, then we uh, call on stop and this just gives a chance for the node to do any cleanup and then set started equal to false. And the final thing to do is just return the, um, the node state. Oops, with the lowercase s. Sweet, so that's pretty much it for the base type of the node. Uh, the next uh, script to create is uh, the behavior tree itself, which is gonna like store all of the nodes. So create a new script called behavior tree. And this is also gonna be a scriptable object. Oops, not a screen, a scriptable object. And uh, we're gonna add the create asset menu attribute to this, um, but not to the nodes themselves because yeah, the editor is going to be responsible for creating these things. For the behavior tree, basically it needs an entry point. So it needs like a, um, a node as the root node. And I'll make this public as well. And it also needs like a, a node state, um, just to represent like the state of the entire tree, which I'll call tree state. And I'll also initialize that to the same thing, just state.running. And finally, it just needs like an update function which mirrors the update function of the root node. And here we just return uh, root node dot update. This should be node dot state. Cool, and I'm missing a bracket there. Sweet. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the behavior tree for now. Um, so we need to now create some subtypes for the node. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier, there are like three main uh, node types, which are action node, decorator node, and composite node. So the, the action node is basically, this does like the bulk of the work in the tree. Um, it has no children, and yeah, that's basically what you implement all of your behavior in. The next type is gonna be the decorator, oops, decorator node. And this node, type has got exactly one child. It's probably the hardest one to understand, but uh, yeah, it just like augments the child's um, return type, which I'll show you a bit later on. The third type is the composite node. And this is kind of like your control flow node. So like your for loops and uh, switch statements and stuff like that. And, and it has like multiple children. So the action node, um, all of these three types are also abstract. We need to create like subtypes for each of the action node, decorator node, and composite node. Um, so the action node is super simple. It has no children, so that's it, basically. Um, we don't implement the interface at this level. Uh, the interface is still kind of like implemented at the, the lowest level of the hierarchy. So for the decorator node, this is also gonna inherit from node and also be an abstract class. Um, and this one is gonna have exactly uh, one child. And I'll just make this like public so we can see it in the inspector. The third type is the composite node, which is pretty similar to the decorated node. It's abstract, inherits from node, um, but it actually has a list of children. Cool. So yeah, that's it for the the kind of core node types. Now we actually need to create some some like concrete. Uh, concrete types of each of the action node, decorator node, and composite node. So the easiest um, easiest node to create is the debug log node. And this is gonna be an action node. And all it does when it executes is just logs 
a message. So first thing to do is just make it implement, uh, sorry, inherit from action node. And now we can finally implement that interface. So inside the start function, stop function, and on update, just get rid of all that stuff. And the first thing to do is just give it a message to print as a public property. So inside on start, we don't really need to do anything. Um, well, actually we could print the message inside on start. And I'm gonna use this like really cool syntax for printing messages. I forget what it's called, but it's totally awesome. Um, so yeah, inside on start, print on start, inside on stop, print on stop, and inside on update, print on update. And the final thing to do is actually return a state from on update. So there's basically no way um, the debug log uh, statement can fail. So we just return success. And now we've actually got enough, uh, enough node types to implement a basic behavior tree. So the next uh, script that I need to create is, um, I'm gonna call it like the behavior tree runner. Oops, runner. And this is gonna be attached to a game object. So this is the thing that's actually gonna execute the behavior tree. So if I just create a new game object and then attach the sucker. Oops, that's weird. There we go. Um, <clears throat> now, if we open up this, so yeah, this is a mono behavior. So now we can create an instance of the behavior tree. Um, I'm not gonna bother creating one in the Explorer. I'm just gonna create it in line for now. Cause yeah, um, sorry, in the project view is what I meant. Uh, so yeah, here we just uh, call, because it's a scriptable object, we can call scriptable object dot create instance and it will just create like an in memory uh, version of the behavior tree. And we basically need to do the same thing for the debug log node. And I'll just call this like log. And now we can set that message to something like, hello YouTube. And finally, we just set the root node equal to the log node. And now inside the update function of the mono behavior, we just call tree.update. And that's literally it. Cool, so now when I run this, we should basically see the the messages getting printed to the console, yeah. So we've got on start, on update, on stop, on start, on update, on stop. So yeah, this is cool, except you can see the tree just like infinitely loops forever, which isn't actually correct. Like a behavior tree should be able to like complete uh, with either success or failure. So inside the um, inside the behavior tree, we just want to basically yeah store this tree state here and just check like if the root node uh, state is equal to state dot running, then we update it. If it's not, then it's either going to be failure or success, and it will be stored in the tree state. And we just return the tree state here. Oops. And this just means, yeah, as soon as the root node returns something other than running, it'll stop being updated. And you could add like a reset function in here and stuff to reset the root node. So now, if I hit play, because the debug log node returns success, it just prints once, uh, returns success, and then it's done. So we just see that one thing there. Cool. Um, so yeah, to make this a little bit more interesting, um, let's start adding some more node types. So the second node type I wanna create is called, oops, uh, repeat, I can't spell, repeat node. And this is gonna be a decorator node. <clears throat> And yeah, the decorator node is, it's kind of, yeah, I find it the hardest one to understand, but um, basically what the decorator node has is one child and um, we're gonna just, yeah, implement that interface here. So inside on start, on stop, on update, just get rid of all that stuff. Yeah, so the repeat node, what it does inside on update, it just needs to call the child.update. And instead of returning that state, uh, if we just return state.running, that means 
this node will never return anything but running even though the child is being updated constantly it may be failing it may be returning success but if we just ignore it and return running then effectively that creates a loop in the tree and you could add other properties and stuff here like um, you know how many times to loop uh, maybe you only want to loop like while it's successful maybe you only want to loop while it's failing um, you can kind of customize this behavior more but for now I'm just gonna leave it like this and there's yeah, pretty much nothing to implement here cool so now in the behavior tree runner if I create uh, a new node type called uh, repeat node if I can spell why am I finding repeat so hard to spell it's not a particularly hard word uh, <laughs> actually I'll call this loop just because it looks cooler so if I set the, the loop to loop dot child to log and then set the root node to loop um, there we go we've got a well yeah um, let me show you what happens we basically get the same behavior that we had before yeah where the tree just constantly uh, continues executing but the nice thing about this is like we've actually explicitly uh, created that by behavior by adding the repeat node um, rather than it being in the this behavior tree class thing here cool so the next node type to create and this is where things get like really interesting <laughs> not really but um, more interesting sequencer the bloody microphone is like in the way of my keyboard I can't really see what I'm typing <laughs> um, I don't really know what to do about that but there we have it so the sequencer node is going to be a composite node um, and we're going to get rid of all this and implement the interface get rid of on start on update blah 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 cool so now we have a sequencer node and what the sequencer node does by definition is it basically um, like iterates over the children and executes them <laughs> executes the children uh, that's literally a statement in programming apparently so yeah executes the, the children from start to finish and um, if one of the children fails then the whole node will fail and it will exit if all of the children succeed then it basically exits at that point um, so it'll continue executing the children so long as the children succeed and if one of them fails then it will fail so first of all we need a uh, property um, an end or well, like a yeah a parameter here um, which is going to be the current child we're executing I can't stop thinking about that sentence now it's really annoying so inside on start uh, basically we set the current child to zero and then inside update uh, all we need to do here is just get the current child from the um, this array here which I forgot to make public um, so get the current child like that yeah and now this is like a really common pattern uh, we do a switch on an update so the update returns the state and then we just do the switch and I'll enter to implement um, the three cases so if the child is running then we return state dot running. Basically the child is not done, so this node needs to continually uh, keep executing, so we return running. If the child fails, then we return failure. Um, by definition, that's what the sequencer node does. It just, it stops executing as soon as one of its uh, children fails. <laughs> In success, if a, if a child succeeds then we basically increment and move on to the next child to execute <laughs> and um, here we just break actually because there's one thing like if we've executed all of the children then uh, we are done the success node <laughs> has conquered the children and has executed all of them um, so it can return success if it hasn't finished executing the children then it needs to keep running and that's what we need to return so let me just type this out so if the current uh, index is equal to like the end of that array then we are done so we can return whoops return state dot success otherwise we return state dot running and that just means yeah we'll continue executing the children sweet okay so that is uh, that's it for the sequencer. So if we add this actually into our um, behavior tree now, so if I create three different types of log nodes, uh, I'll just set this to like one, one, two, two, three, three, YOLO. 
Yeah. One, one, one. Two, two, two. Three, three, three. Man, really creative. Um, now we set the loop. Oh, okay, yeah. So the third thing that we need to do now is create the, um, the sequence, sequence of node. And I will call this uh, sequence. <laughs> and now we just need to add um, all of the children to the sequence. So what do we have? Log one, log one, log two, log three, right? Yeah, these three. And now um, we just set the loop to the sequence instead of an individual log. And you can probably guess what's gonna happen, right? Like it's now gonna print one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So let me just show you that. Hit play. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, like crazy. So yeah, just note that it prints like on start, on update, on stop for the first node. Then on start, on update, on stop for the second node. On start, on update, on stop for the third node, and so on. Cool. So the last node I'm going to implement um, is going to be a wait node, and this is going to be an action node. So the purpose of this node is basically just to add like a delay somewhere in your your tree. It's pretty useful and it's uh, it's easy to implement. So this is going to be an action node, <clears throat> and the first property it needs is basically a float, which is like how long to wait. And I'm just gonna give it a default value of like one second. So next we just uh, need the time the node was started. Oh, and we can get rid of this, implement the interface. Sorry, I should have done that first. Um, get rid of all those. So yeah, inside on start, we just set the start time equal to start.time. And now inside on update, um, if the current time minus the start time is greater than the duration, then we're done, right? So we can return state.success. Otherwise, we just return state.running. Like, we're not done uh, looping yet. Whoops, minus, that should be a minus. Then we return state.running. Cool, so now if we add this uh, wait node into the tree. So, wait node, like this. Uh, pause one. Um, yeah, okay, so if I create one here, here, and here, I guess, pause one, pause two, pause three, and then, um, yeah, just add them into the sequence like this, pause one, pause two, pause three. I didn't actually have to create them in this order, I just, uh, I guess, trying to mirror the, um, the order that they added down here. Then, yeah, we should get a log, then a pause, then a log, then a pause, then a log, then a pause. So yeah, just checking that all of that works. So if I clear, hit play, boom, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So that is literally how easy it is to like add a delay anywhere into your tree, which is uh, really powerful. Cool, so that's pretty much it for the first section of this video. Um, I know it's like 20 minutes in already, but um, the next section is going to be on creating the editor for this behavior tree. So currently we're creating a behavior tree like this mess here, and you could um, create a, an entire tree like this, um, but it's just a little bit tedious and you have to like recompile and stuff every time you do this. So yeah, um, cool. So yeah, moving on to the next section now. Okay, so the first thing to do is just check that you have UI Toolkit installed, uh, sorry, UI Builder installed. Um, it comes pre-packaged with Unity 2021, but I believe earlier versions you need to grab from Package Manager. So just open this bad boy up and you can see like the basic kind of view and stuff here. Um, so this is the document actually. I'm just going to yeah, move some of these windows around so just to give me a bit more space. Cool, okay, um, so yeah, actually there is a shortcut to create an editor window in UI Toolkit. Uh, it's just down here called Editor Window, boom. So I'm just gonna give it the name Behavior Tree Editor and hit Confirm. And yeah, this basically creates three files, a C-sharp file, an XML file, which is just like the structure, and the USS file. So yeah, you can see the, um, the default window it gives you here. Um, it's got three labels. Um, and yeah, let's just close it out for a minute. So in UI Builder, it's actually automatically opened up the XML file, but you can also just double click it here 
um, using these angle brackets and that'll open up here. So we have this, uh, this XML view. I'm just gonna get rid of that label. Um, one thing I am gonna do is add the existing USS it created um, and we can see the default style. It's also created for a label, which I'm just going to delete as well. And the last thing to do is just delete out the these um, these labels that it adds in the C sharp code. And now we just need to add the style sheet to the um, <clears throat> to the root object instead. Sweet. Uh, one more thing I'm going to change is just rather than using instantiate here, I'm going to use a clone tree. And this just um, prevents and passing the root as a parameter here. Um, this just prevents. Uh, like an intermediate sort of template container object getting created. Like if you use the instantiate call, then um, when you clone all this stuff, it basically puts it all into like an intermediate object, which is then added to the root. But uh, if you do it like this, you, you can skip out that intermediate object. It's not a big deal. It's just kind of up to you. Um, also just going to change the path here a little bit and call this like open window. Sweet. All right, so now we've got a pretty good slate for a default editor window. So if we just go to the behavior tree editor and go to editor, yeah, we can now see those three labels are gone. Cool. So the first thing to do is actually um, just, uh, yeah, I kind of just want to point out this library of controls that you have here. So um, one thing to check is when you select the XML, uh, just double make sure that this checkbox is ticked and that basically enables a bunch of um, editor only widgets in this view here. Um, you can also check it in the UI builder, this uh, this checkbox here in project settings. But yeah, so the unfortunately the graph view is like an experimental widget, um, which is not doesn't appear in this, um, this library, but we can get it to appear as a custom control. And to do that, um, I basically need to create a C sharp class, which inherits from graph view. So, um, I'm just going to call this like behavior tree view and just open that sucker up. So yeah, we need to use the um, unity editor dot experimental dot graph view namespace and just inherit from graph view here. And so yeah, what I'm going to do is just create a default constructor. And the next thing is actually um, we need to like if I compile this and switch back, it doesn't automatically appear here. Um, and there's one more thing that we need to do, and that's basically add a UXML factory um, to the class. So that thing exists inside Unity Engine.UI elements. So just make sure you have both of these namespaces. And now we can go public new class UXML factory UXML factory passing in the type, which in this case is behavior tree view and some UXML traits, which you can actually just get from um, the, the class that you inherit from and close it out with uh, these, these curly brackets here. Sweet. Um, so yeah, this is basically enough information to get uh, for it to appear as a custom control down here. Boom. So now I can drag this directly into our editor and start modifying stuff and UI builder, which is a uh, Pretty cool, um, but it's currently got a height of zero. So we just need to set the flex grow to one and then it will fill the rest of the space. Sweet. Okay, so there's a couple more things to actually get it to look like a proper graph view. And the first one is actually just adding the style sheet um, to the the object itself. So I'm just gonna copy it from the, from the editor window. You can just copy this here. And rather than root, we just add it to this object. So we can just reference style sheets directly. Um, the asset database, um, we just need Unity Editor for that. And that's it. And the next step is just um, creating the grid background. So this class just in here uh, exists inside the experimental graph view namespace. Sweet. So if we compile that and switch over to UI Builder. We can now see it's changed color and we can actually see the grid background object in the hierarchy here. It's still not quite the correct styling um, yet. So let me just copy this uh, this code snippet I have. 
Yeah, so you want to open up the style sheet here and paste the grid background selector and all of the style into the style sheet. And that gives it this nice uh, grid background. Cool, so next step is just um, when we preview, you, you can normally um, pan around and sort of drag stuff in the graph view, uh, but there's currently no manipulators added. So if we just go back to the tree view, we can just go this dot add manipulator. There's basically four of them. There's the content zoomer, which lets you zoom content on the graph view. There's the content dragger, which lets you pan around the graph view. There is the selection dragger, which lets you just drag a single node. And there is the rectangle selector, which is like a box select. So they're kind of like the four default ones, which um, they're pretty handy to have really. You can also write your own manipulators, as far as I know. I haven't tried, but um, yeah, cool. So yeah, now we can um, press preview, we can drag, we can zoom, and we can box select. Nice. So next thing to do is, actually I want to add like another panel here for the inspector, um, but I want it to be kind of like a resizable panel, like you can see here. And there is another internal control in Unity called a two-pane split view, which is, it's also not exposed in the library. So we're just gonna use the same kind of trick and create a subclass called split view. And also while I'm here, I'll just create the, um, the inspector view as well. Inspector view. So yeah, the, the split view, this is gonna inherit from like an internal class. And this time it's in unity engine.ui elements and it's called a uh, two pane split view. This one is actually not in the experimental namespace or anything. So I think it's just not quite been added to the uh, UI builder yet. But uh, yeah, basically we just need to do exactly what we were doing before with this UI factory thing. So just copy and paste all that crap and um, just add that in there like that, cool. So that's for the split view, for the inspector view. Um, this is just gonna inherit from just plain old visual element um, because it's gonna be like an IM GUI thing. So yeah, we'll just inherit directly from visual element for now. Sweet, okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. So now we can, uh, we should get these two new controls added down here and we can uh, drag them into using UI Builder. Yeah, so yeah, you see this uh, this error message down here. Uh, you can pretty much ignore that because we're gonna fix it right away. So for a split view, we just drag in two, um, it's just saying it needs two children. So you can just drag in two visual elements and you can see it's added it to this content container. I'm just gonna call this one like left panel and I'm gonna call this one right panel. And then I'm gonna drag the behavior tree view into the right panel. And you can, you can already see it kind of taking shape over here. And I'm gonna drag in the, oh, why did the inspector view not work? Ah, oh, I forgot to add the UXML thing to the inspector view. So yeah, I just need to do this. And then we should be able to drag this in in UI Builder as well. It's quite handy being able to just build everything visually. It, um, it makes makes everything much more discoverable rather than trying to have to like guess all the bloody API calls and stuff. Sweet. Okay, so that is um, the basic kind of view that we have. Uh, so just a couple more things. I'm also going to add a, oh yeah. So if you select the split view, you can also um, adjust like the, the starting panel size. So I'm actually gonna adjust it to like 300 and I'm actually going to adjust the overall height of this thing to like 800 by 600. Just cause I think it's a more realistic size. I think by default it might have like mobile dimensions or something like that. Sweet. Um, okay, so now if I hit preview, we can actually see this dragging around. We can still uh, pan around, zoom in and out and box select, cool. Um, so a couple more things I'm gonna do is just drag in a toolbar just cause I can and I uh, <laughs> just find like UI Builder is like really fun to do this stuff with. So um, the more stuff you wanna add, the better really. Um, so yeah, now we have a toolbar, we've got the split view and I'm gonna drag in 
what else can I drag in? Uh, two other labels. So yeah, I'm gonna add like a label to the top of, you can drag it in even in here as well, which is pretty cool, like exactly where you want it. Boom. Yeah, cool. So now we have uh, two labels. So, uh, actually, did it put it in the right place? No, I don't think it did. Yeah, it needs to be inside that left panel. That one works, cool. So just name this label. I'm gonna call this like inspector and I'm gonna give it this color here, just picking from this color up here. And for this one, I'm gonna call it a uh, tree view. And I'll also just pick from this color up here. Cool, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. So if we open up the behavior tree editor window here, just see how it all looks. Looks pretty good. Maybe 300 is like too much of a big starting size, but that's, that's fine for now. Cool. Okay, so yeah, moving on to the next section now. Okay, so now it's time to actually create the behavior tree assets that we uh, created in part one of this video, um, which we, the editor will modify. Um, so on the behavior tree itself, I'm gonna create a couple of new functions. One called uh, create node, which will take in a system.type. This will be the type of node to create. And another function to delete a node, uh, which will take in a node to delete. So on the tree, um, <clears throat> we'll fill out these in a minute, but on the tree itself, we actually need to create a list of nodes um, because nodes can actually be detached. They're not always attached to the root. Like you can create a node and then link it up. So we just store all of the nodes in a list here. Uh, one more thing is I'm gonna use the edit and namespace for a couple of things. So just add that there. Sweet, so inside the create node function, now we can, um, because our nodes are scriptable objects, we can just go create instance, passing in the type, and then uh, cast it back as a node like that. And now we can set the, um, the node name equals to the type, this just makes it appear in the inspector a little bit nicer. Um, in the node class, I'm gonna add another parameter um, called GUID. And this is just gonna help sort of correlate the UI with uh, the asset. So we're going to uh, call GUID.Generate.ToString every time we create a new node. So each node will be uniquely identified. And finally, we can just call nodes.add uh, node. So that will add it to this list here, but I also want to add the scriptable object as like a sub asset of the main object here. So here I'm gonna call asset database dot uh, add object to asset, passing in the node and this as the second parameter. And now finally just uh, call save assets and return the node. Now for the delete function, um, here I'm just gonna call nodes.remove the node and then call asset database dot remove object from asset and asset database dot save assets. Sweet. Okay, so that's the create and destroy done. Now, uh, switching back to the editor, we actually just need to get a handle to this uh, scriptable object inside the editor view and uh, populate this main sort of tree view uh, with that asset. So just opening up the um, tree editor here, I'm just going to use the on selection change event and uh, just basically check if the, um, the current asset, the active object is, if it is a behavior tree, then uh, we just want to populate the tree view here, but we need to get a reference to the tree view first. Uh, so we can do that pretty easily. Um, using UI elements and I'll just do the inspector view while I'm at it. Inspector view and we just basically want to set this after we've uh, loaded all the XML and stuff we can just use the root object to query for a particular element type so in this case it's going to be called behavior tree view and for the inspector view we just call root.query inspector view whoops inspector view awesome sweet so now inside on selection change i'm just going to call a function which doesn't exist yet calling our populate view passing in the the tree to populate so just using alt enter to create that function and uh, yeah so 
first thing to do, uh, we're back in the behavior tree view class now, um, is just store the tree that we are currently populating, or like currently editing basically. Uh, yeah, this is like the, the current tree that is being edited. So yeah, when we call populate view, we just want to clear out um, anything that was sort of, uh, you know, created from like a previous uh, behavior tree, because we may have more than one in the project. And now I just want to loop over each of these these nodes and create a new node uh, for it. So I'm going to create a new function called create node view, and this takes in a behavior tree node. So here we can just call tree dot nodes dot for each node call create node view passing in the node. <coughs> Sweet. <coughs> So um, I need to create a subclass for uh, the graph views. Basically graph view has got this type here called, it's also called node, but it's in this, uh, this namespace here. So I'm gonna create a subclass uh, for this type where we can do all of our customization. So just need to create a new C sharp script. And I think I'll just call it like, um, I think I'll just call it like node view. And this node view is basically just going to track like an individual node in the behavior tree. So um, first of all, we just need to get the, well actually we can probably just do um, uh, unity engine dot, no, sorry, that's unity editor dot experimental dot graph view uh, dot node. Yeah. Cool, so we need to use the fully qualified name here just because we have a type called node in the behavior tree as well. Uh, not to worry. Uh, so inside the constructor, um, I just wanna get a reference to the node, uh, which we are gonna be editing. And this is the node from the, the behavior tree itself, like the asset basically. Um, so here we just set, uh, basically store a reference to that node. And also I'm just going to set the title equals to the node's name. Cool, so now in the behavior tree view, uh, where we call create node view, now we just need to create a new one of those uh, node view objects, which we just made, create a new node view, passing in the node type, and then calling add element, passing in the node view. Sweet, okay, so the problem is our asset doesn't actually have any, <laughs> any nodes or anything in it. Um, and there's no way to add them uh, yet. So yeah, in the context menu, I'm gonna add some options like uh, to add new node types. So we can do that pretty easily by um, basically overriding build, con uh, what is it? Override build contextual menu. So I'm just gonna comment out the default um, behavior. And what I'm gonna do is basically get something called um, type cache, get types derived from action node. And this is awesome. This basically lets you get all of the types uh, deriving from action node in your project. <laughs> uh, so here we can just go basically loop over each of these types for each var type in types. Um, so now we just want to add a new command on the menu. So we can go like event.menu.append action. And here I'm going to add in the base type in brackets. <clears throat> and then outside the brackets, I'm gonna add in just the regular type name. And now we need to create the action. So in this case, it's gonna be called, uh, we need to create a new function now, which is actually gonna create a new node in our tree called create node. And this is gonna take the system.type as a parameter, which is, it's coming from this type cache thing. This is basically like an array of uh, system types. So here we can just call create node, passing in the type like that, sweet. Finally, we just call tree.createNode, passing in that type. This is gonna return us a node, which we can then create a new node view from. And I'm also gonna do this, so currently we're just doing it for action node. I'm gonna do it also for 
the composite node and the decorator node. Sweet. Okay, so now um, if I right click, we should basically get a ton of options to create action nodes, weight nodes, composite nodes, decorator node. So if I select action node, uh, I think it threw an error because I don't have behavior tree selected. That's a small bug. Awesome, so we now actually get these action nodes and you can see that they're getting added as, um, sorry, down here, they're getting added as like sub objects, sub scriptable objects of this main, this main type here, which is pretty cool. So the next step is uh, just being able to delete these nodes. So we can delete them um, by hooking into a specific event on GraphView and that event is called GraphView Changed. So when we uh, basically clear out the previous view, we want to ignore all of those events. So we just kind of need to, yeah, GraphView Changed, this is the event. So I'm basically going to unsubscribe uh, where's that? Graph view change. Unsubscribe just before clearing out the previous view and then resubscribe. And just Alt Enter to create that function. So this function gives us a parameter called Graph view change, which has got a whole bunch of different options like which elements it's removing, which edges it's going to create, which elements have moved around, etc. And you can actually modif modify those um, those elements, but in this case, I'm just going to return uh, return the, the structure wholesale without modifying it. So uh, first thing to do is basically just check uh, the graph view changed dot, uh, sorry, graph view change dot elements to remove. If it's not null, then we want to basically iterate over this list. So here we just do for each uh, alum in elements to remove. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is basically cast um, each of these elements. We'll try to cast it as a node view. Equals alum as node view. And then if it is a node view, then I think I need to do does not equal to null. Then we do uh, tree dot delete node, node view dot node. Sweet. Okay, cool. So now, with any luck, I should be able to delete these nodes. So if I click this, yeah, cool. So we get our nodes populating when we click the asset. Now, if I delete this, boom, nice. You can see it disappears from the UI and also disappears from the asset. And I can create new, new node types. Awesome, sweet. Okay, so that is pretty much it for the nodes. Uh, the next step is just gonna be hooking up all of the edges and the ports. Okay, so before we go too much further, uh, just a couple of bugs to fix up. Like if I select the behavior tree view, um, the node positions are not saved. Like if I deselect and select, they are lost. So opening up node view here, uh, we can just set the, or actually inside the node, the main behavior tree node, we can just add a uh, public property called uh, position. And inside the node view, we can override uh, a function called set position on the graph view node uh, class and here we can just set um, uh, what is it node dot position dot x equals new position dot x min and similarly here just set this to y min and set this position to y cool so for the node view um, what we want to do is basically just set the style dot left equals to the node position dot x and similarly for the Y, to set the style.top. And that style thing is pretty much just the way of seeing how you can um, set, the position, <coughs> set the position of the node. Cool. Um, one more thing I for, forgot to do in here before was set the view data key equals to the node GUID. And this is just like a piece of metadata that's stored along with the, the graph node, which we can use to retrieve the node view from the main graph view later on. 
Cool. Um, and one more thing inside the behavior tree editor, where is it? This file here. Uh, just after we compile, this whole thing is loaded again and on selection change doesn't fire. So we need to just manually call it. Or if we manually call it, it just means that the view will get populated automatically. And we don't have to go and select the asset every time. Cool. So just checking all of that works. Um, yeah, so if I select the asset, now move these guys around, deselect, select again, nice. They are remaining in their position. And you can actually like uh, select the sequence of node and you can see the position changing here from the sub asset. Sweet, okay, so to add uh, edges, we need to add some ports to these nodes. So yeah, going back into the node view class, uh, what I'm gonna do is create two new functions, one called create input ports and another one called create output ports. And I'll just, uh, I'll enter both of these. Um, I just put the import ports first and whoops, that's supposed to be a semicolon. Um, yeah, so we need two properties on the node view um, just to make it a little bit simpler. I'm just gonna use this namespace here and create a input port and also a output port. Cool, so inside the input port, um, just get rid of that default implementation. Um, basically wanna check what type of node it is because the port requirements for each type of node is slightly different. Um, so here I'm just gonna check if the node is an action node, uh, do something. Um, otherwise, if it is a, a composite node, composite node, do something else. Otherwise, if it is a decorated node, do something else and just copy that for both of these. Cool. So for the inputs, basically all of these uh, types actually do have, uh, can have an input. So we can just go input equals instantiate port orientation dot horizontal direction dot input port capacity, whoops, uh, port dot capacity dot single and it just needs like a type here, so um, you can just pass in any dummy old type. And yeah, so the requirements for inputs are actually all the same for these three node types, but I kind of like to just uh, delineate them like that, just to make it a little bit more explicit. So here, we just want to check if we have an input type, then input port, sorry. Then we, I'm just going to clear the port name because it gives it um, a, a pretty funny name by default, well, it just, it gives it the name of this type, which is Boolean, and it kind of doesn't make sense, so I'll just clear it here. And finally, we just need to add the input <coughs> um, port to the input container. And, oops, I just need to set that equals, does not equal null. Cool, so yeah, pretty much needs to do the same thing, but this is gonna be for the output, and for the output here, and the output container, and add the output, and, yeah, so we want to do pretty similar stuff, um, but this time it's going to be for the action node. Basically the action node has no uh, children, so it's, uh, it shouldn't have any output actually. <laughs> we can just leave that blank. The composite node, this can have um, multiple children, right? And the decorated node can only have a single child. Cool. So. That is it for the ports, I believe. Um, so there's one more thing that we need to do to actually get them so we can wire them up. Uh, and that is inside the behavior tree view. We need to override a function, which is kind of, yeah, I don't know. Like by default, it, it doesn't work. You need to override this function, um, which seems kind of like a bug, but anyway. Um, and it's called get compatible ports. Um, so here, I'm using link uh, just to make this a little bit simpler. So we can, we've got a list of ports in the graph view class. So we can go uh, list of ports to list dot where, and now we can go, basically we give the, um, this, this is gonna iterate over every element in this list. And here we, Go end port, so import, we just wanna check the direction of the ports it does not match, so we don't try to connect an input to an input. And also, um, just check 
the import dot node does not equal to the start port dot node. And finally, we just need to return to list on the end. Sweet. So that should be enough to actually get these nodes to connect up together. Um, oh, let me select that. Cool. So our nodes now have uh, ports and we can connect them up. Awesome. And the decorator node, this can only have a single child. So if I then try to connect another one, it deletes the previous child, which is as expected. Cool. Um, so, but if I actually select the sequencer node, you can see the list of children is empty, even though there's two edges visualized here. So we need to update the asset every time an edge gets created. So I'm um, going to do yeah something pretty similar to what we did for the uh, create node and delete node. I'm going to create a few more functions here on the behavior tree class called uh, add child. And this is going to take a parent node and a child node. Um, add child. The next one is going to be called remove child. <clears throat> and the third one is going to be called get children, which is going to return a list of nodes. And it doesn't need a child, it just needs a single node in that case. Cool. So for the add child, um, Again, we need to check each of the node types. So actually the only types that can have nodes are the decorator type. So decorator equals to the parent as, basically cast that thing as uh, to a decorator type. And if it is a decorator, then we just set the decorator.child equal to that child passed in. And pretty similar thing for the composite node. Composite node. Um, we just want to check if it is a composite node type, composite, I guess let's leave it as composite. And rather than just setting the child, this has got a, an array of children, so we just, uh, or a list of children rather, so we just add the child to the list. Cool. Um, so for remove child, it's pretty similar, except instead we just set the child to null and we call remove here. And then for the get children, it's pretty similar again, um, except <clears throat> we need to return a list. Uh, so um, yeah, I guess the best way to do this is just create a list here. Um, so we can go children equals to new list of nodes. And then if it is a decorator node and the decorator.child does not equal to null, then we just want to add that child to the list. Otherwise, if it's a composite node, I guess we can just return this list of children directly in this case. Um, and then finally, just yeah, return that list. I'm kind of just creating this here so it doesn't return like a null structure. I kind of, I'd rather have like an empty list than a null list. So yeah, that's the reason for that. So back in the behavior tree view, Let's go here. Um, what do we need to do? So basically, yeah, inside on graph change, uh, anytime an edge is created, this function will get called. And um, instead of checking elements to remove, there is another field on the structure uh, called, I think it's called edges to create, right? And here we just want to iterate over these. So we go edges to create dot for each uh, edge in the edges to create. So for each edge, um, what we need to do is basically get the node from the, the start node and the end node. So we need to get the node view and that will let us get the node finally. So this is gonna be called the parent view. And we get that from the output node and cast it to a node view. And do a pretty similar thing for the child view child view except get it from the input and finally we can call um, the tree dot uh, add child parent view child view cool <clears throat> so oh sorry parent parent view dot node and child view dot node sweet so should be able to test this out now Okay, so if I select this tree, 
Um, go back to the sequencer node, if I select this in the explorer and then drag an edge here, you can see the children are now actually getting added to the, uh, the sequencer node, which is pretty cool. So now we just need to deal with uh, deletions. Um, and deletions are actually handled inside this loop here, elements to remove. So inside here, we can just get the edge, uh, edge. So basically cast the element to an edge and check if we have an edge. And now we just get the parent and child views in much the same way. And instead we just call remove child, uh, pretty much like we're doing here. Cool, okay, so testing that out. We're also not populating the, the edge view here yet. Um, so we'll do that in the next step. Um, but yeah, the sequencer node, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit weird now because we're not actually displaying the edges that were already sort of created. Um, oh no, that's, that's not too bad. Okay, cool, yeah. So we've created these two edges. If I delete this and delete this, boom, nice. So the edges are now actually getting deleted correctly. Um, and if I, yeah, if you link them up, it, it gets removed correctly. Final step is actually just populating the edges from um, the children in the, the tree. So this step is probably the most complicated step. Um, what we need to do is pretty much just do the same loop here. So this one uh, creates the node views in the graph and now we need to create the edges. So what we want to do, rather than calling create node view, um, I'm going to get the children for each node. So we can call get children passing in that node. And now we just do children, whoops, uh, children dot for each child. Then what do we want to do next? So it's a little bit awkward at this point. We've got the nodes, but what we're actually wanting to do is connect up the node views that were created at this point here. So we need a function here that will return a node view from a node. So I'm gonna call find node view, passing in the node. And here we can just return uh, get node by GUID, passing in the node GUID, and then casting that as a node view. And now uh, inside for each, I can just call uh, find node view, passing in the node view and node view. So this is gonna be called the parent view. And this one's gonna be called the child view. Child view. <clears throat> and now this, this node view, this has got the input and output ports that we need to connect up. So for the child view, we need to connect, um, oh, sorry, start with the parent, right? Parent view, uh, take the output and connect that to the, uh, the child view's input. And this actually returns an edge. And we need to add that edge into the, the graph using a add element. Cool, so I think that should be enough. Let's hope. Test it out. Okay, so if I select this behavior tree, I don't think, yeah, so we don't have any edges yet. So if I create these, and now deselect, select again, awesome, so the edges stay. Um, it's probably not that <laughs> convincing. If I create an empty tree uh, with nothing in it and then select this, you can see the edges stay. And yeah, if I test it out a little bit more, create another sequence of node here, uh, another action node here, another sequence node. Um, I don't know, what else do I want to do? Maybe some more action nodes. Yeah, something like that. Then select the empty one, select the clean one. Awesome, so it's all like saved out correctly. Cool. Okay, so now it's time to implement the inspector view. So when we select these nodes, uh, we get the list of properties uh, appearing over here. So if we open up the node view class, uh, we can override a function uh, called uh, on selected. And what I'm gonna do is just create like a public action here. 
and this thing is just a way where the behavior tree view can subscribe um, on node selected can subscribe to basically when a node is selected so inside this I'm just going to check if uh, if it's if it's been set just invoke it passing in uh, itself as a parameter cool so inside um, the behavior tree view I'm going to do a very similar thing this is basically just bubbling it all the way back up to the editor um, so when we create uh, node views what all we do here is just set the node view uh, sorry the node view this one dot set that action equal to the main one so when a node is selected it's just going to implement uh, basically yeah call this this top action here cool so now inside the uh, behavior tree editor yeah inside this guy um, I'm going to create a function here called uh, on node selection changed and I'm just going to call like tree view dot on node selected is equal to on node selection changed uh, I think I just need to pass in the node view as a parameter here and now we can just call a function which doesn't exist yet called <clears throat> update selection passing in the node on the inspector view so if I go to this function here now inside the inspector view um, there's a couple of things we need to do one is add the editor namespace and yeah what we're going to do is create a an instance of an editor um, and we do that oh, first we need to just clear the children of this visual element to clear any like previous selection we had and now we can create the editor by going editor dot create editor passing in the nodes node which is this is like the scriptable object um, I might just rename that to like node view just to be a bit more explicit cool and now we need to create an I am GUI container uh, to house all of the stuff <laughs> um, because it's like visual elements you need to create this like I am GUI wrapper and here it just needs the um, uh, like a default kind of update function to run and I think I got that wrong I think there needs to be a little arrow thing there cool and finally we just add that container as a child of this visual element uh, one more thing that we need to do is um, we need to destroy this editor each time uh, we create one so here I'm just gonna do I think it's unity engine dot object dot destroy immediate passing in the editor cool um, so with any luck after practicing this 10,000 times this should work <laughs> let's see okay so if I select the behavior tree and then select a node amazing so yeah we get like a full inspector view for each one of these nodes now it's pretty awesome um, there's a whole bunch of like extra crap in here uh, like all of the children and stuff that uh, I don't really want to see inside the inspector so we can hide all of that if we go to the node class and just um, add this like hide in inspector attribute to all of these properties here and also on the decorator node um, I'm just gonna hide the child because I don't really want to see it you can kind of like tell from the edges in the graph if it has children or not and also the composite node uh, just hide the children and the inspector there as well whoops did I just copy that what happened there I have no idea okay cool sweet so that should clean up the inspector view quite a lot um, most of these nodes don't actually have properties yet like the sequencer and the repeat node uh, you could imagine adding like a repeat count or something up here and it will if you just add a public property it will just automatically appear in the inspector which is pretty cool uh, the wait node has got like a duration like one two three four five six whatever uh, debug log node has got a message <laughs> which I think I wrote earlier YouTube I love you yeah um, the wait node yeah same as this wait node really isn't it um, except that's an enormous time to wait so I might just change that cool um, yeah so that's pretty much it for the inspector ok 
Okay, so we're getting close to the end. Um, one of the last things to do is just set the root node for the behavior tree. Um, so to do this, I'm actually gonna create a brand new node type called root node. And um, the reason for this is the root node is kind of a special case type of node. It's it kind of implemented at the same level as the action node and the decorator node and the um, composite node, uh, but it just needs to be treated slightly differently in the editor. Um, so for example, the root node should always be at the root of the behavior tree and you can't add it anywhere else in the tree. Um, and it is the only node in the behavior tree which has no parents. It's a sad old little node. Um, oh, it's not root node child, sorry, it's just a regular child. Uh, yeah, so the root node has got no parents and it's only got one child and it's lived a very quiet life. Um, so this is the basic implementation for it. It's uh, yeah, basically just forwards on the update call to, uh, to its child, just passing on its life. Okay, <laughs> um, the, now we need to, inside the behavior tree, uh, inside add child where we're handling the different node types, we just need to create a new case here. Um, for the root node, root node, and yeah, just copy all of this stuff. It's pretty much the same. So just copy this down here for remove child, just change that to a null. And also just copy this down for get children. Uh, just make sure to include this clause here for the root node as well. Um, so copy that and we need to add the root nodes child uh, to this list here for get children. Sweet, um, so the other place to update is inside node view where we create the ports. Um, so yeah, I keep harping on about the root node being a special case. Uh, so yeah, for the input ports, it is the only type of node in the tree that has no inputs. Um, and then for the output ports, it's the same as the decorated node, so we can just copy that case. It's just got one child, one single child. Cool, so in the behavior tree view, uh, inside populate view, uh, just before we create all of the node views, uh, if we just check here, if the tree dot uh, root node is equal to null, then we set the tree dot root node equals to tree dot create node type of root node, and yeah, just cast that back as a root node here. Sweet, um, <clears throat> one more thing that we actually need to do because we've modified this, um, I've found that you need to call editor utility dot set dirty, uh, passing in the, the tree asset. Um, yeah, this sort of seems to be necessary. Otherwise, sometimes your changes get lost after an assembly reload. So I need to look into that a little bit more. I need to look at how to handle undo, redo and stuff like that. But for now, this, this seems to work. Um, so inside the behavior tree editor, uh, there's also another bug that happens. As soon as you create a new behavior tree, it selects it, but then that asset is not totally ready. So when you try to then add the, um, the root node to it, uh, it, it throws an error about not being able to add a sub object to a object that is not serializable or something. Um, anyway, the way to get around it is uh, just check uh, asset database can open asset in editor passing in the tree dot get instance ID um, and did I oh sorry that's a function called yeah sweet um, so yeah that that'll get rid of that error all right um, so now if we hop back into the editor. And yeah, you'll notice the behavior tree has no root nodes. So if I select it, boom, it's added a root node here. The root node has been set up in the behavior tree and we have this like fancy new root node type. Oh, I think I need to hide this field, but uh, I'll do that later. And if I select it, boom. Yeah, you can see it's uh, correctly set the, the child. Awesome. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to actually run this behavior tree. Um, so if we, you remember the behavior tree runner script that we wrote earlier, uh, we can just delete all of this stuff and uh, just make the behavior tree public because it's an asset that will assign in the inspector. So if we go to the inspector, we can now just drag um, this behavior tree on to the inspector. Cool. Um, so 
just kind of one thing to note, like if we have two game objects, both of them are referencing the behavior tree and both of them are just going to be calling update and stomping over each other's changes. So what we actually need to do is clone this behavior tree. Um, so inside the behavior tree node, I'm going to create a new function called uh, public, it's going to be a virtual function, um, public void, public virtual node clone. And here, uh, the default implementation is just going to be called instantiate this, and that will just clone like this, this in particular node because it's a scriptable object. So inside the um, root node, uh, here we can uh, just we need to just implement this for the four types, the root node, action node, decorator node, and composite node. So for the root node, um, we just need to do something slightly differently because it has a child. So we just set the root node equals to instantiate this. Now we set uh, the new node child equals to the current node, basically clone the current child and set it on the new copy of the root node, and then just return the node like that. Cool. Um, so inside the action node, um, oh yeah, the action node is, is the basic implementation that we have in the, the node class. So for the, um, the decorator node, uh, here it's very similar to the root node, except we just need to set the decorated node here. And then for the composite node, composite node, this one, um, here we pretty much do the same thing. So we clone the main node type using instantiate. And now we just need to clone this list of children. Uh, so that's actually pretty easy. Uh, we can just do children.convertAll um, and then it basically iterates over each child and we just call clone on each of the children. And then set the children and return the node. Cool. Um, so that is cloning all of the nodes. Oh, sorry, I think I need to make these um, override composite node, decorated node, and the root node should all be override. That should get rid of those warnings down here. Sweet. Um, okay, so inside the behavior tree, behavior tree, uh, now we just need another function here called clone. Uh, so this is going to be called return like a brand new behavior tree. Um, and here we just pretty much do what we were doing before. The behavior tree is a scriptable object, so we can just clone it using instantiate, passing in this, and now we just need to set the root node uh, equals to the tree dot root node dot clone, and then return the tree. And now that's basically cloned the the behavior tree. Sweet. So inside the behavior tree runner, this guy here, uh, what we do is just set tree equal to tree dot clone. And this will return a clone of the behavior tree. Sweet, so now if we go back into the editor, and I'm actually going to modify this tree to just be exactly what we had before. So create a debug node, a wait node, uh, debug node, wait node, debug node, and a wait node, and just connect all of these up. Boom, 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 boom. Sweet. Um, now for the debug log node, I'm just going to set this to one. The wait node is uh, one as well. This is going to be two, and then this is going to be three. So it's the exact same sequence we had before. Um, now inside the hierarchy, we've got two game objects. And if I just drag the console window down here, uh, we should basically see one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, twice for each game object. So if I hit play. Amazing. So yeah, it's printed 18 messages. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, one. Yeah, so it does it once for one object once for another one, and so on. Awesome, and now uh, if I clear this, if I were to create like a repeat node and just plug this in here, like this, and hit um, play, it should just keep repeating forever. Three, one, two, three. Oh my God, amazing, so cool.
Um, yeah, so it actually seems to be working. I think I'm just going to end this video here um, because this is like an endless topic. There's a lot more to cover uh, in terms of writing like a full editor, but I think this is a pretty interesting starting point. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you've tried anything like this um, in terms of like custom editors before. Uh, this is like my first one and yeah, I think it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. I think I'm going to make this uh, develop it a lot further. Cool, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Kakite!